Hello and welcome to another LAMP Bible Study. My name is James, your Bible reader and host for LAMP Bible Study. Super excited to be joining together in fellowship once again as we continue to seek the Lord's wisdom through His Holy Word. We will be picking back up in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 16 in the King James Version today. I hope and pray everything's going well with you, and if not, welcome Welcome to another Lamb Bible study. We made it. <laughs> Lots always going on in the world. I know we have a busy, busy schedule. There's a lot of information in these upcoming chapters as well. Things to, you know, we can think about in our in our daily lives and and see the wisdom of the Lord even back then and how it pertains to us now. So a lot of times during our Bible study, I will say, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Um, during those times, um, what we want to do is we want to push aside our own thoughts and feelings for, for the moment. And we want to allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives, to hear, to listen, to be guided by Him. And then bring our thoughts and feelings back and see where they align, see where they are, where they are they aligned with what the Holy Spirit, what the Lord is trying to tell us, or are we off in left field somewhere. <laughs> and so I can tell you as a witness, that happens quite a bit. <laughs> I mean, even this, this these past couple of days, very challenging in different different areas of my life, whether it be work or or out and about. Um, or just hearing things or just being told things, it can be very challenging. But, you know, once I hear it, I also give it to the Lord. I also bring the Lord immediately into it as much as possible because that helps me. That helps relieve any type of immediate ur urgency and stress that I have um, that with it. E by allowing and keeping the urgency, but it also allows me to be free and to be able to breathe, to take a moment and understand that I have someone that is all knowing, all power, all glory, all holy, who is righteous, who is the redeemer and the good shepherd and the provider of our salvation. Our, our Lord Almighty Jesus. Amen and hallelujah. So there's a lot to go over today. So let's get started in the book of Deuteronomy, King James Version in chapter 16. Observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of Abib, the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. Thou shalt therefore sacrifice the Passover unto the Lord thy God of the flock and the herd in the place which the Lord shall choose to place his name there. Thou shalt eat no leavened bread with it. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread therewith, even the bread of affliction. For thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt in haste, that thou mayest remember the day when thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt all the days of thy life. And there shall be no leavened bread set seen with thee in all thy coasts seven days. Neither shall there anything of the flesh which thou sacrificest the first day at even remain all night until the morning. Thou mayest not sacrifice the Passover within any of thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, but at the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name, there thou shalt sacrifice the Passover at even, at the going down of the sun, at the season that thou camest forth out of Egypt. And thou shalt roast and eat it in the place which the Lord thy God shall choose and thou shalt turn in the morning and go unto thy tents. Six days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day shall be a solemn assembly to the Lord thy God. Thou shalt do no work therein. Seven weeks shalt thou number unto thee. Begin to number the seven weeks from such time as thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn. And thou shalt keep the feast of weeks unto the Lord thy God with a tribute of a free will offering of thine hand, which thou shalt give unto the Lord thy God according as the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. 
And thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God, thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy man manservant and thy maidservant and the Levite that is within thy gates and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow that are among you in the place which the Lord thy God hath chosen to place his name there. And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in Egypt, and thou shalt observe and do these statutes. Um, thou shalt observe the feast of tabernacles seven days. After that thou hast gathered in thy corn and thy wine, and thou shalt rejoice in thy, in thy feast, thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant and thy maidservant, and the Levite, the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow that are within thy gates. Seven days shalt thou keep a solemn feast unto the Lord thy God in the place which the Lord shall choose, because the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thine increase, and in all the works of thine hands. Therefore thou shalt surely rejoice." Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose in the feast of unleavened bread and in the feast of weeks and in the feast of tabernacles and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Every man shall give as he is able according to the blessing of the Lord thy God which he hath given thee. Judges and officers shalt thou make thee in all thy gates which the Lord thy God giveth thee throughout thy tribes, and they shall judge the people with just judgment. Thou shalt not wrest judgment, thou shalt not respect persons, neither take a gift, for a gift doth blind the eyes of the wise, and pervert the words of the righteous. That thou, or that which is altogether just shalt thou follow, that thou mayest live and inherit the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not plant thee a grove of any trees near unto the altar of the Lord thy God, which thou shalt make thee. Neither shalt thou set thee up any image which the Lord thy God hateth. Okay, so there was a lot here in this chapter. Uh, sermon upon sermon here but listen to this listen to this in verse 5 thou mayest not sacrifice the passover within any of the, thy gates which the lord thy, thy god giveth thee but at the place which the lord thy god shall choose to place his name in <clears throat> there thou shalt sacrifice the passover at even at the going down of the sun at the season that thou camest forth out of egypt so the Lord is providing this information to the people through Moses. So Moses, as if you've been with us through the previous books of the Bible, um, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and now Deuteronomy, we know that Moses has taken the nation of Israel out with the Lord's strong hand out of um, Egypt and into uh, the wilderness for some time to, uh, to Mount Sinai to collect the commandments and then they were to go into the promised land but that generation withstood they, that with generation t sent 12 people of their tribes one person designated for each tribe into the promised land to uh, spy it out to check it out and they came back 10 of them came back with a bad report two of them um, came back with a good report and um, the two that came Caleb and, and um, Joseph um, Joshua came back with good reports however the people didn't believe them the people didn't believe they believed all the others um, and instead of understanding that the Lord thy God was with them. And not only that, he was still in the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night and over the tabernacle. And he had they had just seen all the wonders that he did and performed out of Egypt. And so much so, more to come. But, of course, they heard that there were... Uh, you know, walled cities and these stronger people, so they did not believe uh, the report, so they rebelled once again. And Moses is reminding them that we're doing these feasts in in honor of the Lord, but also some of them is 
are in remembrance of where we came from and because we need to remember what we were under and how grateful we are and how we're going to continue to move forward in the Lord. And so thinking about that, thinking about that, this is point number one, bringing past to present. It absolutely is wonderful for us to have our memories and have things that we think about and things that we can, uh, that we've lived through, because a lot of that provides the wisdom um, as well through our journey throughout life. But we're to move forward. We're to move forward with the Lord. We can always remember things and we can always um, are to remind us of just who we are, who we were. So for when we accept the Lord, our Savior Jesus in our heart as the, the Redeemer, the provider of our salvation, and we believe that we have been forgiven of sins through him, then we are born anew and we are to continue to move forward. We see what how we all were, what we were doing prior to being saved and understanding what that leads to. And now we are to move forward and not to look back, not to let in those old habits, those old thoughts and feelings, but to continue to move forward and grow in our new spirit and be refreshed every day because the Lord's blessings are new every morning. Before we go on to the next point, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Okay, so again, there's a lot here, um, particularly, um, again, in verse 17 and 18. Listen to what Moses is telling the nation of Israel here as well. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee. Judges and officers shalt thou make thee in all thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee throughout thy tribes, and they shall judge the people with just judgment. So the Lord is telling them, you know, I, I'm the provider and I won't, yeah, you can definitely give of a free will offering him of your choice, give of something, doing something freely and willfully. And also Within the tribes, there's going to be people who are going to be leaders that can make determinations, seeking the wisdom of the Lord through the wisdom of the Lord, being just judgments. So looking at and saying, and and we're going to see examples of this when we get particularly to the New Testament or through kings and such, where we start to see people wanting to do things but not wanting to do the most or the best they can or holding back so he's reminding them he's also reminding them that the lord the god is there with them so provide your free will offering and do it to the utmost right do what you can with what you can with what you have been provided give freely right but also know that the Lord God Almighty is going to know if the people of Israel, instead of bringing a, a sheep, you know, a, a non, a, a perfect, a pretty much perfect sheep, bring a sickly or tattered and torn or elderly sheep, something that not giving the best, not utilizing the best, bringing past to present things that we can think about. The Lord provides us gifts through the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, the gifts of the Lord. We are to do our best. We are to show our best. We are to strive for our best. And in in the in spreading the word and doing what it is that the Lord through the Holy Spirit has set us out to do, whatever that may be, whatever your gift may be, encouraging, being a leader, being a singer, being an, uh, someone that's there, a listener, whatever those th- whatever that gift may be, because there are many. Trust and believe there are many, um, and uh, more than we can even think of, and being it to the most 
giving glory and honor to the Lord and knowing where that came from, knowing that those gifts came from the Lord. We're, we're just giving back what he's already given us, but we're doing it to the most because he knows when, you know, we cut corners. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, witness right here. I am a sinner, you know, guilty as charged. However, I have been saved because Jesus is, our God is merciful. He is very merciful. And I believe that there are times, even, you know, now where I feel, yeah, I don't feel like maybe I didn't give my best or maybe I didn't think of things fully. And so I strive continually to do better, to think more of him, think more of listening to what the Holy Spirit wants to guide me through and to as well. And then thanking him, thanking the Lord for those opportunities that come, um, however big or little, little that we, and, and there is no such thing as big or little. That's a humanistic thing that we have to look at whereas even the Lord points things out what we think are big are nothing in his eyes what we think are little are again nothing in his eyes he he is the Lord God Almighty even though those things may be big for us they are nothing for him because he is the creator he is the good shepherd so think on those lines when we think of that when we think that well you know, I don't, I don't really want to bother the Lord with this, or I don't really want to, I, I want to really tr don't because we can rely on the Lord and he provides the wisdom and the guidance for us. And then there you go. We have it. We got it. We get through it. We deal with it. We correct it. We help. Before we go on, though, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel? And what does it make you think? A lot here. So I'm going to pawn sermon. <laughs> um, if you have any thoughts or feelings or questions, feel free to uh, reach out in the comment section or, you know, jot them down. Jot them down. Some people write directly in their Bible or in notes or somewhere. Um, just jot it down or type it on their notepad, whatever. Whatever you have, you know, uh, keep a hold of that and speak to the Lord. You know, go in prayer. Um, before, uh, let's continue to read, though, um, in Deuteronomy chapter 17 in the King James Version. <clears throat> Thou shalt not sacrifice unto the Lord thy God any bullock or sheep wherein is blemish or any evil favoredness for that is an abomination unto the Lord thy God if there be found among you within any of thy gates which the Lord thy God giveth thee man or woman that hath wrought wickedness in the sight of the Lord thy God in transgression his in trans transgressing his covenant he hath gone and served other gods and worshiped them, either the sun or moon or any of the host of, of heaven, which I have not commanded. And it be told thee, and thou hast heard of it, and inquired diligently, and behold, it be true, and the thing certain that such abomination is wrought in Israel. Then shalt thou bring forth that man or that woman which have committed that wicked thing unto thy gates, even that man or that woman, and shalt stone them with stones till they die. At the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses shall he that is worthy of death be put to death, but at the mouth of one witness he shall not be put to death." The hands of the witnesses shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterward the hands of all the people, so thou shalt put the evil away from among you. If there arise a matter too hard for thee in judgment between blood and blood, between plea and plea, and between stroke and stroke, being matters of controversy within thy gates, then shalt thou Arise and get thee up into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose, and thou shalt come unto the priests, the Levites, and unto the judge that shall be in those days, and inquire, and they shall shew thee the sentence of judgment. And thou shalt do according to the sentence which they of that place 
which the Lord shall choose, shall shew thee, and thou shalt observe to do according to all that they inform thee, according to the sentence of the law which they shall teach thee, and according to the judgment which they shall t tell thee, thou shalt do, thou shalt not decline from the sentence which they shall shew thee to the right hand nor to the left. And the man that will do presumptuously and will not hearken unto the priest that standeth to minister be there before the Lord thy God or unto the judge, even that man shall die, and thou shalt put away the evil from Israel. And all the people shall hear and fear and do more presumptuously when thou art come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee and shalt possess it and shalt dwell therein and shalt say, I will set a king over me like as all the nations that are about me. Thou shalt, uh, thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One from among thy brethren shalt thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother, but he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt to the end that he should multiply horses. For as much as the Lord hath said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. And it shall be, when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests, the Levites." And uh, it shall be that, or it, and it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them. This, or that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren, and that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left, to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. Okay, so there was a lot here. A lot here. A lot of things that are pretty much talking about, oh, let's say here, they're talking about things to come, prophecies that is going to happen in Israel. And they're not, at the time... Moses is telling them about the, the feasts and the tabernacle and the, then uh, that they're going to be able to conquer the, in the, all the nations in the promised land because those nations have not turned to the Lord and they refuse to and they're super wicked. So now the Lord is giving the promised land over to, as he told Abraham, um, to the children of Israel and they are to go in and remember these things, but there's also forewarning in here. A lot of it, a lot, just in this chapter. Moses is telling them that the Lord already knows what's going to happen. And so they may be confused at this time, but as time goes on and as we get through First and Second Samuel and First and Second Kings, you'll see why the Lord was telling them what he was telling them. Okay, so it starts in, oh, uh, let's see here, eight. If there arise a matter too hard for thee in judgment between blood and blood, between plea and plea, and between stroke and stroke, being matters of controversy within thy gates, then shalt thou arise and get thee up into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And thou shalt come unto the priests, the Levites, and unto the judge, that shall be in those days, and inquire, and they shall shew thee the sentence of judgment. Okay, to a judge. So he was telling them they're going to go into the promised land, and they're going to have the priests, the Levites, and then they're going to have divided up into the each tribe, and each tribe's going to have a leader. But now we have judges. Where do those come from? Well, the Lord's telling us. The Lord's telling us that these people 
when times matters of certain issues where it becomes too hard, he gave an example between blood and blood, between plea and plea, and between stroke and stroke. Blood and blood. That sounds so familiar, right? Hmm. Blood and blood. What is blood and blood? Sounds like family, maybe? Someone really close, maybe related by blood? Even though in the whole mass of human development, we all have blood, people can bring in past to present, people tend to think of immediate family or family that they know and have a strong relationship with, particularly when situations do arise. And there is an issue and it comes to a point of conflict of interest because even though you love that person, there may be really thing a really strong issue that has happened. And so we even see that today where it's better t- that sometimes you may in society, they have laws and rules where they want to remove someone that's related so that someone else can step in that's non judgment that is would not judge based off of relationship. So does that always accurate but the Lord's telling Israel you're going to have judges then he goes on to the second portion take note verse 14 when thou art come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee and shalt possess it and shalt dwell therein and shalt say I will set a king over me like as all the nations that are about me Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One from among thy brethren shalt thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. So now there's a king. The Lord knew that the people would get into the promised land and start doing things that they shouldn't be doing. The Lord God is their God. He's the protector. He is our protector. He is our redeemer. He is the good shepherd. And so they are to rely on him, but instead they're going to call for a king. And the Lord's telling them he knows that all of this is going to happen. And so again, at the time, the people... They're hearing these things, maybe not even quite understanding that they are prophetic in that, yes, these things are going to come true because the Lord God knows each and every one, each and every one of us. So take note of these things because they're going to come back up, particularly as we continue to read more and more into through the Old Testament, bring past to present. The Lord God, he knows each and every one of us. He knows us by name, but he knows us. One thing I ask people, and I've said this before in in a previous Bible study, but I bet it's it's been a while. Um, People that that I particularly know, I ask them, how are you? And the question that I ask is, always I always immediately get the surface level how they are feeling how they're thinking whatever's going on at the moment or around the time we as humans we go through a lot so much so that Jesus even mentioned several things in the New Testament about it So I ask because I want to hear from a person how they are doing, how they are doing, how they are feeling, how they're doing, whether they actually need assistance, whether they need encouragement, whether they're doing just fine, whether everything's going wonderful and successful. Because when that question is is asked, it's it's not a question that's asked because of a situation 
whether positive or negative, it's asked because I want to hear how the person, and, and I have to clarify a lot of times with a lot of people, that's great, the information that you told me, and I repeat it to them, I want to know how you are. And that sometimes will break that ice, break that barrier. And I know that in those times when I do ask, typically it's from the Holy Spirit. It's, I, I feel like it's being guided because something there's something there and it needs sometimes it's just needs to be released sometimes it's just hey I made the best cake yesterday and it was wonderful and I really think that people partake in it but I was expecting more or it could be you know I'm going through a lot but I feel fine I feel I feel like I'm going to be okay. Or it could be even, I, I, ha, I, I have a few things. I, I, haven't, I haven't really had, took time, but I, I need somebody to listen to what I have, what, what I need to talk about. I need to relieve some things off of my chest. Where there are two or more believers in the Lord, the Lord is there. The Lord is there at all times and the Lord is listening. So when we confess, when we talk to each other, the Lord is hearing us. The Lord is hearing how grateful we are, how earnest we are, how much hurt we are, or how how sorrowful sorrowful we are. He he hears us and and he knows. So Think about that. Before we go on, though, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? Read over this. How does it make you feel? What does it make you think? Um, there, we may go over just a tad today, so just a fair warning. Let's continue to read in Deuteronomy chapter 18 in the King James Version. The priests, the Levites, and all the tribe of Levi shall have no part nor inheritance with Israel. <clears throat> they shall eat the offerings of the Lord made by fire, and his inheritance. Therefore shall they have no inheritance among their brethren. The Lord is their inheritance, as he hath said unto them. And this shall be the priest's due from the people, from them that offer a sacrifice, whether it be ox or sheep. And they shall give unto the priests the shoulder and the two cheeks and the maw. The first fruit also of thy corn, of thy wine, and of thine oil, and the first of the fleece of thy sheep shalt thou give him. For the Lord thy God hath chosen him out of all thy tribes to stand to minister in the name of the Lord, him and his sons forever. And if a Levite come from any of thy gates out of all Israel, where he sojourned and come with all the desire of his mind unto the place which the Lord shall choose, then he shall minister in the name of the Lord his God, as all his brethren the Levites do, which stand there before the Lord. They shall have like portions to eat beside that which cometh of the sale of his uh, patrimony. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord and because of these abominations the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God for these nations which thou shalt possess hearkened unto observers of times and unto diviners but as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee so to do. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken, according to all that thou dear, 
uh, desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more, that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thine heart, How shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet, prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. Okay, so a lot here. A lot here. And there's something here too. Because the Lord knows what was going on and what will be happening. So the Lord's giving fear warning. Not only the warning, he's telling them what's going to happen, but then he's also giving them the way out. Okay, so he's talking to them. One of the uh, several of things he's saying here, he says, verse 9, When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those lands. Because they were wicked. They were doing all kinds of detestable things. So think about the Ten Commandments that we went over um, in Deuteronomy and Leviticus and Numbers when we received the Ten Commandments through Moses and think about all the other commandments that the Lord has provided and judgments and, and how loving thy neighbor as thyself and all of that and then everything the opposite of that. Not just, not righteous, wicked, sinful, arrogant, hateful, conniving, mischievous, everything that's wrong. So he's telling them, don't fall into these things that these people, the reason why they are no longer here is because they were doing these things. So then he tells them in verse 14, for these nations, which thou shalt possess, hearken unto obstacles, observers of times and unto diviners but as for thee the lord thy god hath not suffered thee to, so to do because the lord god is god he is god there's no need to do wickedness there's no need to uh, try to speak to things that are not knowing because the only person the only god that knows anything is the one and only god he is the alpha and the omega he's being he and he's the creator so you're speaking to a creation. They too don't know past and present and future. They don't they don't know future particularly. Only the one Jesus, our Lord and Savior, Alpha and the Omega. That's it. So all the other stuff. And so he goes to tell him. He's and then he continues. He said you know, so I know that these things are going to come about. So here's what I'm going to do. Verse 15, the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. Listen to the prophet because the prophet's going to be telling you what needs to be corrected. You know, you haven't been given, uh... Uh, correct sheep you've been given blemished instead of unblemished or you haven't been kind to your neighbor you've been arrogant you've been selfish and we're gonna see throughout many different prophets throughout the bible <laughs> and there are a lot that they're gonna be telling the people of israel time and time again turn from the wickedness and follow the lord so take note and he also talks about 
there also will be false prophets because they're people are people. They're going to see one thing and then try to replicate it. Sound familiar? <laughs> Without going through what has to be done, which is seeking the Lord's guidance and allowing the Lord to provide that prophecy, to provide those that wisdom, right? People try to do it themselves. Sound very familiar? And so he gives warning. He says, I am going to speak through people. However, if those things don't come to pass, I did not send them. Hmm. Bringing past to present. Sound familiar? Think about that. Think about that. What you hear, what you see, what you go through, how people involuntarily unsolicited information to you. Are there things where, you know what, wow, that did actually was beneficial. Um, I feel like that was guided by the spirit, by the Lord. Or, man, I shouldn't listen to that. That turned into a disaster. Now, you know, the wages of sin is death. It's disaster and destruction. So now, you know. Think about those things and think about how now we have the Holy Spirit as our guide. And so we can listen to the Holy Spirit. But when we don't, when we don't listen, prepare for that destruction. Before we go on, though, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read in Deuteronomy chapter 19 in the King James Version. I know there's a lot here. When the Lord thy God hath cut off the nations whose land the Lord thy God giveth thee, <clears throat> and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their cities and in their houses, thou shalt separate three cities for thee in the midst of thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it. Thou shalt prepare thee a way, and divide the coasts of thy land, which... The Lord thy God giveth thee to inherit into three parts that every slayer may flee thither. And this is the case of the slayer which shall flee thither, that he may live, whoso killeth his neighbor ignorantly, whom he hated not in time past. As when a man goeth into the wood with his neighbor to hew wood, and his hand fetcheth a stroke, with the axe to cut down the tree, and the head slipped from the half, and lighteth upon his neighbor that he die, he shall flee unto one of those cities and live, lest the avenger of blood pursue the slayer while his heart is hot, and overtake him because the way is long, and slay him, whereas he was not worthy of death, inasmuch as he hated him not in time past." Wherefore, I command thee, saying, Thou shalt separate three cities for thee, and if, thy, and if the Lord thy God enlarge thy coasts, as he hath sworn unto thy fathers, and give thee all the land which he promised to give unto thy fathers, if thou shalt keep all these commandments to do them, which I command thee this day, to love the Lord thy God, and to walk ever in his ways, then shalt thou add three cities more for thee beside these three. That innocent blood be not shed in thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance, and so blood be upon thee. But if any man hate his neighbor, and lie in wait for him, and rise up against him, and smite him, mortally that he die and fleeth into one of these cities then the elders of his city shall send and fetch him thence and deliver him into the hand of the avenger of blood that he may die thine eye shall not pity him but thou shalt put away the guilt of innocent blood from israel that it may go well with thee thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark which they of old time have set in thine inheritance, which thou shalt inherit in the land that the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it. One witness shall not rise up against a man for an, for an iniquity 
or for any sin in any sin that he sinneth at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. If a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him that which is wrong, then both the man between whom the controversy is shall stand before the Lord, before the priests and the judges, which shall be in those days. And the judges shall make diligent inquisition inquisition and behold uh, if the witness be a false witness and hath testified falsely against his brother then shall ye do unto him as he had thought to have done unto his brother so shalt thou put the evil away from among you and those which remain shall hear and fear and shall henceforth commit no more any such evil among you and thine eye shall not pity but life shall go for life Eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. Okay, a lot here, particularly a well-known verse. Uh, that is verse 21. However, let's rewind a little bit back. Because listen to this. This is um, also um, interesting. The, then both, in verse 17, both, then both the men between whom the controversy is, shall stand before the Lord, before the priests and the judges, which shall be in those days. And the judges shall make diligent in inquisition. Um, and behold, if the witness be a false witness and hath testified falsely against his brother, then shall ye do unto him as he had thought to have done unto his brother. So shalt thou put the evil away from among you. So, he was telling people, you know, he was telling them, don't bear false witness, don't lie, because that's what could happen. People could try to because of whatever the circumstances is. And there are many over, out there. People tend to get jealous. People tend to get envious or want things that other people have or want just because they don't like a person, they don't like their character, they don't like the way they look, they don't like the way they talk, they don't, I mean, I, I'm a witness, I've been told countless of times, my voice sounds horrible, <laughs> particularly over the phone, particularly over the phone, um, but, uh, I, you know, and I just say, but then others, um, they're like, you sound like a person that is on a radio. Like, you sound clear. You sound articulate. You, I can understand. What have you. But there are people that also will misplace their anger and tie it into other things. What do you mean? Okay. So, situation will happen. And they'll be angry. And they'll be angry and not be able to cope or recover or move on from that. Therefore, another situation comes not related. Could be good. It could be bad. It could be whatever. But something triggers, triggers a relation. It could be a color. It could be waking up at a certain time. Whatever that relation that may be that triggers just the uttermost simplest thing that could be similar and sometimes not at all. It could be just straight up imagination. They'll bring in another situation in and utilize, move their anger from one thing into a completely different separate area. I've seen it time and time and time again. Have I been subject to it? Yes. Have I myself Go, I'm, I'm going to go with you, probably. <laughs> Although, when I, I like to say that I catch myself on those things. Because a lot of times I catch myself before, because what I do is I go to the Lord. I do, I do, I go to the Lord. And I'm like, I feel this way, and I shouldn't feel this way, because this has nothing to do with this. So give me peace about this so I can do my best with this. And in that asking, you're actually getting a two best. You're getting 
the best in that situation, that you're going to be the best in that situation, and you're going to be the best in the situation that has nothing to do with what you were having difficulty coping with. So think about that. Always seek the Lord and his guidance and see just how much wisdom that he has to provide for us. And we no longer have to live eye for eye, tooth for tooth, because the wages of sin are death. But when we are forgiven, when we believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we're forgiven. You are forgiven. I'm forgiven. We don't have to worry about that. It's n- now, before, because before I say anything more, it's not an excuse. Never is, never will be. And Paul talks about that. And many of the other New Testament books talk about that as well. well however, we know that we are forgiven and we are strengthened when we seek the Lord. Allow for him and his strength to flow in our lives. Before we go on, though, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? We'll read over this. How does it make you feel? What does it make you think? I know there's there's a, several more points in chapter 19, um, but sermon upon sermon, but we're going to continue to read <laughs> because there's a lot here. So let's continue to read in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 20 in the King James Version. When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies, and seest horses and chariots and people more than thou, be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be, when ye are come nigh unto the battle, that the priest shall approach and speak unto thee people, uh, unto the people, and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. And the officers shall speak unto the people, saying, What man is there that hath built a new house and hath not dedicated it? Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in the battle, and another man dedicate it. And what man is he that hath planted a vineyard, and hath not yet eaten of it? Let him also go and return unto his house, lest lest he die in the battle, and another man eat of it. And what man is there that hath betrothed a wife, and hath not taken her, Let him go and return unto his house, lest he die in the battle, and another man take her. And the officer shall speak further unto the people, and they shall say, What man is there that is fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go and return unto his house, lest his brethren's heart faint as well as his heart. And it shall be, when the officers have made an end of speaking unto the people, that they shall make captains of the armies to lead the people when thou comest nigh unto a city to fight against it then proclaim peace unto it and it shall be if it make thee answer of peace and and open unto thee then it shall be that all the people that is found therein shall be tributaries unto thee and they shall serve thee um and if it And if it will make no peace with thee, but will make war against thee, then thou shalt besiege it. And when the Lord thy God hath delivered it into thine hands, thou shalt smite every male thereof with the edge of the sword. But the woman and the little ones and the cattle and all that is in the city, even all the spoil thereof, shalt thou take unto thyself. And thou shalt eat the spoil of thine enemies, which the Lord thy God hath given thee. Thus shalt shalt thou do unto all the cities which are very far off from thee, which are not of the cities of these nations, but of the cities of these peoples, which the Lord thy God doth give thee for an inheritance. Thou shalt save alive nothing that breatheth, but thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely, the Hittites and the Amorites, the Canaanites and the Perizzites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, or in the Jebusites, yeah, that 
uh, they teach you not to do after all their abominations, which they have done unto their gods. So should ye sin against the Lord your God. When thou shalt besiege a city a long time and making war against it to make to take it, thou shalt not destroy the, the trees thereof by forcing an axe against them, for thou mayest eat of them, and thou shalt not cut them down, for the tree of the field is man's life, to employ them in the siege. Only the trees which thou knowest, that they be not trees for meat, thou shalt destroy and cut them down, and thou shalt build bulwarks against the city that maketh war with thee until it be subdued. Okay, a lot here. But there's something that I don't hear a lot of sermons about. Particularly here where Moses is going to repeat it. Not only this, but it gets repeated in multiple different times throughout the Old Testament. But I never hear a sermon about it. I hear it, but there's never a point to it. It's very, it's just as many times as I've heard, it's just interesting how this never comes up. But every time I read it, I always hear it. And I'm like, this is something here too. This is something here too, because people as people are people and during different times, including difficulty, including changes and transitions, there are things that people do in life and that it's okay, that it may not be something that they are to be a part of at that time because there's something that they need to partake of. For instance, when someone was afraid, he was a twin, he took someone's birthright, you already know who I'm talking about. He left. He came back because the Lord told him to. The Lord told him to go ahead and go meet his brother, which he did. But turn to the side for a moment. After he met his brother, even. Because he didn't want to fully go in just yet, but that was okay. And many a times... You hear, and we talk about this, but people will take a moment to turn to the side for a moment because it may not be that time because it's within the Lord's time. So there may still be something or it just may be not the time. Listen to this. Listen to this because this is so Man, woman, whoever it is, it pertains to all of us and including our walk. Because I hear it now. And one thing that you can, if you know, if you've heard these things before, people will say to you, particularly people in your life, people, even when it comes to following your path with the Lord, they when how you know, how you know, it's because people bring their thoughts and feelings and they want to bring their thoughts and feelings into trying to guide and manipulate even the Lord's word. Maybe you'll, maybe you've heard, um, just throwing it out there. Why aren't you married yet? Where's the child? Where, where's the children? Or why haven't you bought your house? Why aren't you at a certain level in your career? Why didn't you go to school? I thought you were going to become a chef. You were supposed to be a doctor. Any of these scripts that you were told about but never really given, particularly from someone above sound familiar listen to this verse 5 <laughs> and the officer shall speak unto the people saying what man is there that hath built a new house and hath not dedicated it let him go and return to his house lest he die in the battle and another man dedicate it not one 
spot in these verses is it well you're just not ready or you're just not you you're a coward absolutely not the lord knows the Lord knows you. The Lord knows me. The Lord knows us better than people that spout out things without going to the Lord. Because we want to use utilize our thoughts and feelings for the betterment of someone, but we didn't go to the Lord. Think about that. And it continues. I want to read these. And what man is he that hath planted a vineyard and hath not yet eaten of it? Let him also go and return unto his house, lest he die in the battle, and another man eat of it. And what man is there that hath betrothed a wife and hath not taken her? Let him go and return unto his house, lest he die in the battle, and another man take her. The Lord gives freely, and he understands. And sometimes we have to do something. We need to be somewhere. We need to be a part of something. We need growth. We need time. And that doesn't mean that the Lord is not utilizing us. The Lord is utilizing us in a different way. Or it's not that time. Jesus even said to his family, to his, to his, own, to his mother, it's like, it's not my time. Are, do you, are you are you hearing it? Pray, go to the Lord, go to the Lord, go to the Lord. Amen, hallelujah. Okay, before we go on, do a quick review. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? We'll read over this. How does it make you feel? What does it make you think? I know there's going to be a lot of comments, a lot. Of, and he said, "What? <laughs> Who does he think he is?" Go to the Lord. Um, let's start a quick review. Start off in chapter 16. We laugh, we cry, we have a good time with our Lord and Savior. Um, there's a lot here. Um, this went way different from what I even was thinking this was going to go. Um, <laughs> listen to this, though. Um, seven weeks shalt thou number unto thee. Begin to number the seven weeks from such time as thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn. And thou shalt um, keep the feast of the of weeks unto the Lord thy God with the tribute of a free will offering of thine hand, which thou shalt give unto the Lord thy God according to, according as the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. Exactly. To remember and know all the ways that the Lord blesses us and works in our lives, even when we don't think he's at work, he is definitely at work. He is always at work. We have to now examine are our thoughts and feelings and our what we believe, are they aligning with his or they not? On to chapter 17. Oh my goodness, there's so much here. Um verse 16, but he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt to the end that he should multiply horses for as much as the Lord hath said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. Don't go back. Continue to move forward. Take note of that because when we get to um, King Solomon, <laughs> and so, but take note of that. The Lord wants us to continue to move forward. Exactly. How can we grow through the Lord's wisdom if we don't continue to move forward? Plus, we want to. We want to make it to par paradise. <laughs> I want to make it to paradise. Hey, I'm I'm moving forward. Let time keep rolling. <laughs> Amen. I'm ready. I'm ready for this new body. <laughs> Eternal. Amen and hallelujah. Continuing on into chapter 18, where he talks about a warning. 
But the prophet, verse 20, but the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. A warning, because people, um, even in the New Testament, when uh, the the disciples were going around and um, even as much they were performing um, the miracles as well. And then a person saw that and they, they, they believed, you know, they had faith. They were a magician and they had faith. If you know who I'm talking about, you can put his name in the comments. He had, he, he believed, but then he was seeing the miracles and he was like, look, wait, wait a minute. Show me how to do these miracles. I will even pay you. And what did the disciples do? They, the, they said, that's not how this is. This is not act now and you'll receive and with only a, you know, $50 down and $50, you know, five easy payments. <laughs> <laughs> I could just see the info the infomercial now. <laughs> no, that's not how the, how this works. It's not how the Holy Spirit works. No, no, it's by faith. It's by faith and knowing who the Lord God Almighty is and having faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus. It's by faith. Amen and hallelujah. Amen. We need it. On to chapter 19. <laughs> Where, verse 18, and the judges shall make diligent inquisition and behold, if the witness be a false witness and hath testified falsely against his brother, then shall ye do unto him as he had thought to have done unto his brother. So shalt thou put the evil away from among you. It was saying, you know, this person is bearing false witness because they had wicked intent and whatever they, they were trying to, you know, dispossess them of their land, take whatever item or even up to death. It was he, the judge was responsible to find out. And if that person truly is bearing that false witness, then those punishment that they were intending for their brother, who are they supposed to love? Instead, there's evil and wickedness in their heart now falls on them. Bringing past to present. We have a Lord and Savior that fights our battles. Amen and hallelujah. <laughs> Give it to him. Give it to him. And on to chapter 20. <clears throat> Point in being, verse 4. For the Lord your God is he. He that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. The Lord already knows. The Lord already knows. The Lord sees you. The Lord hears you. He already knows. Have faith and believe in him. Trust in him. He will give you the guidance and the peace and the healing and the freedom that we deserve because he first loved us, and he loves us for all eternity. Amen and hallelujah. With today's Lamp Bible study, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? We'll read over this. How does it make you feel? And what does it make you think? Thank you once again for joining me in another Lamp Bible study. I hope and pray that we continue to seek the Lord's wisdom together through his holy word. Please continue to pray for me. I will always continue to pray for you. Lamp Bible study comes out every Tuesdays and Thursdays with highlights throughout the week and flashlights on Fridays. If you have any praises, prayer requests, questions, concerns, or comments, feel free to leave those in the comments section or even check out the Instagram page. It says, does get updated. <laughs> it does get read. It does get updated every now and then um if you have any additional praises prayer requests questions concerns or comments feel free to reach out there is a email in the contact section of the youtube channel super excited about our next lamp bible study continuing on in the book of deuteronomy and the king james version we will be picking back up in chapter 21 super excited lots more wisdom lots more to come i know i'll see you there wherever you are have a blessed morning a blessed day a blessed afternoon a blessed evening and a blessed night god bless and Jesus loves you.